This video was inspired by Trooper 10173 through the Troy Point Insider, which is our very own social media platform without the big tech censorship. We have over 70,000 insiders and hope that you will join as well. It's free to sign up and you can find the registration link in the video notes below, or you can scan this QR code with the camera app on your phone or tablet. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, this is Troy from TroyPoint.com and in this video I will show you how to update firmware on an Android TV box. In this video I'm using the Mi Cool KM2 Plus but this will work on any Android TV device as long as you can obtain the proper firmware that goes with your system. Now on my Mi Cool KM2 Plus you're going to see here if I go into settings, device preferences, about, I go into system update, it checks for an update, but it says it is up to date even though there is new firmware available for it. Now for certified Android TV boxes, such as the On Android Box, NVIDIA Shield, Google Streamer, this is how you will update the operating system on your Android TV box. Now since Mikul isn't pushing these down automatically, we need to apply this update manually, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna back out of this screen here, and I do want to show you, we are on version 11 for Android TV, and I do know that applying this next firmware update will upgrade this to Android TV 12. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the MeCool website on my PC. I'm gonna switch over to that now. So whatever firmware you're looking for, I suggest looking on the official website of your device. And for me, cool, you'll notice if I hover over support, go to download, find my streaming device. Again, I'm using the KM2 Plus, and it says right here, firmware, I'm gonna click that. And now we have an update.zip file. Now I am going to open this update steps text file, and it gives us instructions on how to go ahead and update this. Now, these instructions here are useless because there is no reset button on the Mi Cool KM2 Plus. Usually the way this works is we can unplug the device, hold in on the reset button, and then plug it back in while we're still holding in on the reset button, and then it will boot to recovery where we can choose a USB drive with the firmware. But unfortunately, there is no reset button on this, so we're going to have to do something a little bit different. We've already tried this. Go to About Update, and there is nothing on that screen that allows us to update it manually. Now, something very important here, it says to make sure that we format the USB drive that we're going to put the firmware onto as FAT32. So that's the first thing I want to do. Now I'm going to use the free Rufus utility to format this as FAT32 and the reason I'm not using Windows is due to the fact that this is larger than 32 gigabytes and that's the max size to format FAT32 through the Windows utility. This is a free download. I will link to this software in the video notes below. Okay, where it says boot selection, I'm going to choose non-bootable move down, you'll see under file system, for me, it automatically changed to large FAT32. If yours is on something else, make sure you change it to that. We want large FAT32. I'm going to uncheck create extended label and icon files, I don't need that. Now I'm gonna hit start. Click okay, it's going to erase everything on the USB drive. And my Windows Explorer has opened my USB drive, so the format has finished successfully. I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna exit Rufus, and now I'm going to download this update.zip file to that USB drive. Hit download. Download anyway. I'm gonna choose the USB drive in Windows Explorer. You want to make sure that you save this to the root file of the USB drive. You don't want to save this in any folders. It needs to go to root. So I'm going to hit save. Again, I'm using my Windows PC to do all of this. Okay, it has finished downloading. And when we open Windows Explorer, you're going to see the update 
.zip file on my USB drive. Okay, I'm gonna eject this from my Windows machine. And now I'm going to move back over to my Android TV box. I'm gonna plug the USB drive into one of the available USB slots on the Android TV box. And you will see the message top right corner of the screen. It said checking USB drive. Okay, now I need to go into settings, network, and I need to find my local IP address. And you're gonna see where it says connected. It shows my internal IP address 192.168.1.199. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, now that I've written down the IP address, there's one more thing to do on this Android TV box. I'm gonna hit the back button on my remote, go into device preferences, click about, move down, highlight Android TV OS build and click it seven times. You are now a developer. Back button, move down, Developer options will now be in this list. Go into that. And we want to make sure we turn on USB debugging. Click OK. OK, we're ready to connect to this device with our Windows machine. And now I'm going to move back over to my Windows PC. OK, now we need to connect our Windows PC to the Android TV box. And to do that, I'm going to be using Android TV tools. And I have provided an in-depth tutorial that I will link to in the video notes below on how to set up Android TV tools on your Windows machine. So you're gonna see here the .exe file. I'm gonna right click that, click run as administrator. Okay, the application has loaded. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the IP address of the Android TV box that I wrote down earlier. 192.168.1.199. Now this will more than likely be different for you. You need to write down the IP address of your actual Android TV box. I'm gonna hit the enter button, press any key to continue. The first time you do this, you're going to get a dialogue on your Android TV box and you must check the allow box and then click allow for this connection to be approved. Now, something else you may notice after approving that, you may need to keep typing in that IP address until it connects. It may take multiple attempts where you have to type in that IP address, just keep typing it in until you have connected. Okay, now I'm going to choose option seven, installation helper. Hit enter. And then at the bottom it says X for more tools. Next screen, I'm gonna hit X and then enter. And then 10 advanced restart options. So I'm gonna type in 10, hit enter. And we want to restart in recovery mode. So I'm gonna type in two, enter. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the Android TV box. It is now restarting. And now we have the recovery screen. Now I'm going to use the remote control for my Android TV box. Move down. Now common sense would say that we should go into UDisk, but that's not the case. We want to go into apply update from SD card. So I'm going to click apply update from SD card. Move down, choose update.zip, click that. Now you will see it says mount SD card failed and that's why we choose the update.zip file. And now we're just gonna let this go through the installation process. This could take a little while. Just let it sit here until it has booted back to your Android TV launcher. Okay, I'm back on the launcher of my Android TV box. I'm just gonna take a look at the notifications here. So we just get some messages here after the update. Still recognizing my USB drive, I can get rid of that. There's no need to leave that in the device. I'm gonna go into settings, device preferences, about. We are now on Android TV OS version 12. So the update did work. Now I do know that this is somewhat convoluted way of getting an update on your Android TV box. However, some of these generic manufacturers don't push out over the air updates. They just provide 
download links on their website and you have to update the firmware manually like we just did. Again, just a reminder, I do have everything linked in the video notes below, including instructions on how to set up Android TV tools on your Windows PC. It's a great set of tools, cool things that you can do, which I go over in my video tutorial for that. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to my channel for many more tutorials like this in the future. As always, thank you very much for following Troy Point. Have an awesome day.